What's up guys, welcome to the third audiobook for uh, this competition book that I have uh, created. Basically, if you didn't know, I'm sorry I have to explain this every audiobook, um, I ran a competition where you have to write a, a, um, a story uh, based off of the title The Music Box and these are the three winners uh, down here and today we're going to be reading the third and final winner uh, Inky Ink, who I know very well, he's a good friend of mine, uh, and he has written a story that uh, has been renamed to Agony Alley. So let's read this. It's a really good story as well. Um, the other two are amazing. Go check out those videos. Anyway, link in the description to this document. Uh, and yeah, there's a new competition running too, uh, where you have to write one based off of Showtime. Uh, anyway, based off the word Showtime. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Let's read this. Uh, this is this is really good. Uh, so here we go. Sean, open the door, Sean. This isn't funny, the little girl cried, staring intently at the group of children on the other side of the window. Let me back inside. The rain continued to pour mercilessly in the alley as the stranded girl's cries fell upon deaf and deaf defiant ears. <laughs> Uh, Sean, the impromptu leader of the band of rap scallions, gazed on in triumph at his handiwork. Inky Ink is very good with, like, long words and stuff, so I'm not going to be able to say most of them. <laughs> uh, Charlie was an odd girl, and in the eyes of young Sean Colt, odd was punishable. All it took was to pin down the annoying security puppet guarding the door, and their plan had worked seamlessly. Sean wasn't completely heartless, though. He would let her back in after a few more minutes, but for now he was free of Charlie and happy as could be. Come on, gang, this is getting boring. Let's get some more pizza, Sean called out to his entourage, pulling away from the window. As Sean walked away, he thought he could faintly hear car tyres screeching to a halt outside, but he paid no mind to it. Charlie's shouting stopped. Ooh. <laughs> Twelve years later, Sean Colt found himself working down the very same roads he had walked in his youth, and yet again in the pouring rain. Walking past Freddy's always gave him a sickening feeling of dread and guilt, and he knew it wasn't just because of the crappy pizza. On days like this one, Freddy's was a grim reminder of his mistakes. Over the years, he had tried convincing himself that it wasn't his fault, but no matter what he did, he couldn't get away from the fact that he had locked Charlie outside that night the night she was murdered in cold blood by an unknown killer. He turned to look at the establishment across the street from him and wondered how it was still open. Years of slow decay and lack of proper upkeep showed clearly on the restaurant, yet day after day the families would pour in for their shot at the ideal Freddy Fazbear's pizza experience. After a few moments of staring, Sean started towards the building. He didn't quite know why, but something seemed to be calling him. Strangely, he could hear faint musical notes in his mind. With each step towards Freddy's, the noise in his head grew louder, but also more inviting. The tune was a simple and jovial collection of tidy notes plunking out a cheerful melody on what sounded like a music box. Before he knew it, Sean found himself at the door of Freddy's. He hesitated a moment before opening the doors, the familiar musty smell of the establishment flooding his senses. After all these years, Sean had expected the place to look and seem different. But to his surprise, the place seemed as it was all those years ago, granted some new technical additions. One new asset the restaurant had gained was a gumball machine complete with a smiling face and swivelling arms. The label on the machine called for 25 cents to be deposited in exchange for a gumball. Oh, what the heck? Why not? Sean thought to himself as he began searching his pockets for change. Uh, while feeling around, he felt something sharp and withdrew his hand quickly. How could he have been so careless? With caution, he reached back into his pocket and withdrew his Swiss army knife, which had unsheathed itself in its pocket without him realising. That was close, he muttered to himself as he realised he had no cash on him. Suddenly the music returned. It had briefly ceased upon Sean's entry into Freddy's, but now it was back and stronger than ever. It seemed to be leading him somewhere. The melody had a certain uncanny charm to it, in a way that Sean felt compelled to follow. He turned the corners of the hallways as he roamed the building, barely paying any mind to the visitors around him. Eventually, he relocated the source of the music. Situated before him in the centre of a room appeared to be a giant box designed like a present. 
Sean stood in confusion for a few moments before the box opened and up from it rose a marionette not unlike the security puppet he had known all those years ago. Suddenly the music lost its charm for Sean and feelings of guilt and fear flooded his consciousness. The puppet before him seemed to stare into his soul, seeing and feeling every thought in his being. Sean took a step back, intending to leave at that very second, but what but was stopped in his tracks when he heard a familiar voice. You. It couldn't be. Right? It was you. Sean looked up, his gaze meeting that of the lifeless marionettes. Ch ch charlie Sean blacked out. He awoke in a great void, surrounded by nothing but darkness. In his mind, a music box still chimed, but its tune had shifted. Replacing the light-hearted tune from before was a melancholy serenade. Strangely, the song made Sean want to cry. He had never been one to get emotional over music, but something within these notes impacted him, as if they had experienced tragedy like none other. Suddenly, a shape appeared before him in the darkness. The shape had no definite form, but was instead a rippling mass of shadow with an intense aura of dread. The strangest thing about the form was its vague semblance of a rabbit. Whatever this thing was before him, Sean wanted it gone. Before he could even attempt to cry out in protest, however, the voice returned. You will know my suffering. Sean, upon hearing these words, fell into a sinking dread. At this point, he had no idea what, he, what was going on and he wanted out. To his surprise, the void seemed to oblige. As he looked around, the shadows fell away to reveal cold, grey walls and asphalt floor and the shimmer of fluorescent lights behind him. It didn't take long for Sean to realise where he was. He was still at Freddy's, but he was outside in the rain, in the very same alley that Charlie was left to die in. He turned to look into the glowing windows only to see Charlie standing on the other side apathy clear upon her expressionless face. The haunting melody grew more prevalent as Sean turned around into the alley once again. Before him stood the shadowy rabbit, as silent as the grave. Fear took over Sean's mind as he realised what was happening. He turned back to the window and began to pound on it. Please let me in, Charlie. I'm sorry for what I did. Just please let me in, he cried. Charlie only stared in response, awaiting the coming retribution. Sean's fearful cries grew quieter and quieter as the music grew louder. He didn't have to turn to know what, that the rabbit was approaching him, but he didn't want to look either. Sean closed his eyes and felt the biting blade of a knife pierce his back again and again until he lost consciousness. Again. No, wasn't one time enough. Sean was thrust back into awareness as he hit the cold wet floor of the alley once again. This time, the music was louder and the rabbit more ferocious. Sean rose to his feet and looked at the rabbit in his eyes, in its eyes, or at least where the eye should have been. The shadow moved swiftly and decisively, a knife manifesting within its hands as it swung down at Sean's neck. Pain shot through his body once again as his life was rendered from him. Again. Sean's panic knew no bounds upon the third iteration of this nightmare. Was he doomed to repeat a horrific death? forever? Was this his eternal punishment for what he did as a young child? He quickly ran out of time to consider these questions as the blade of a knife met his eye with surprising force. Again! The haunting melody had grown louder and louder, becoming almost unbearable to listen to, its speed frantically rising as well. Sean could hardly think as the notes swirled around his mind in this never-ending nightmare. He clutched his ears with his hands as he felt blood start to trickle from them. What could he even do at this point? Resigned to his fate and give up? Before he could stop to think about his options, he was surprised by a sudden change. The music had stopped. He looked up at the rabbit, who seemed significantly different. He no longer seemed to be a mere memory of the past, but rather something new, something sinister. The aura of dread uh, deepened surrounding the shadow and from its face peered two pinprick eyes. Sean looked behind him at Charlie through the window. Her face of apathy had morphed into one of abject horror as she too gazed upon the changed rabbit. The change in the rabbit's appearance and feeling were intriguing, but what happened next truly surprised Sean. Instead of charging at him like the previous scenario scenarios, the rabbit drew and held out his knife. It was clear that he was offering it to Sean, but why? Hesitantly, Sean crept over to the rabbit and took the knife. The music resumed softly as the rabbit looked upon Sean. Without a moment of hesitation, 
Sean plunged the knife into the rabbit. To his surprise, the rabbit showed no signs of pain, but instead let out a chilling, inhuman laugh and appeared again not far from Sean's position. Sean turned to the rabbit again, filled with rage. He noticed the music had gotten slightly louder following his attack, but he didn't care. He took another stab at the rabbit with similar results. His frustration grew with the music's volume as he repeatedly darted across the alley, desperate to catch up with and stab the rabbit that had executed him over and over. He found himself running all over the area in pursuit of the shadow. All the while, its laugh grew louder and louder. Finally, Sean found himself exhausted. The music had resumed its frantic nature and intense volume and he could no longer take it. He looked up once again at the rabbit which strode over to him with a silent confidence. Sean wanted to retaliate but found himself too weak to do so. He could only watch as the rabbit stretched out its hand and touched it to Sean's forehead. Everything went black once again. When Sean awoke he found himself drenched in liquid and lying on the ground. He rose to his feet and was horrified by the sight that greeted his eyes. The room was covered in blood with the corpses of three or four visitors lying on the ground. Sean quickly called for help and ran out of the room, but to his absolute horror, he found the bodies of visitors strewn throughout the whole pizzeria. His confusion and horror were insurmountable. What had even happened? Who could have done this? The music box returned once again in his mind, anticipating the immense suffering he had already endured. He raised his hands to his head, but something caught his attention. Clutched within his hand was his knife, completely drenched in blood. He collapsed to the floor, landing in a pool of blood. The only sound that rose above the incessant music box was the sound of sirens. <laughs> oh, Inky, you've done it. You've done it, boy. You've done it. <laughs> oh, I absolutely love this. I love it in every single way possible. Um... The one thing I did point out in in my comment on on this uh, this particular story was the use of the music box and the music. Uh, I think it's very clever to up the tension and to up the um, kind of panic, I guess, and fear and stuff by using the the like the um, I guess the sense of music and time and stuff like that. I think it's such a good way to provoke fear and stuff um, with the with the volume of the music and the pitch of the music and the pace of the music. Those are all good ways to to uh, change the mood, I guess. Um, but a lot of that was really intense and kind of graphic as well. And then you get the reveal at the end that it's it's actually just I mean, it wasn't really an illusion, but um, Sean awakes and finds that he he was the person that that stabbed all these people um yeah it, it's kind of it's mad it's mad it's a very chilling story very good and i also like how it wasn't just um like a story about the puppet or anything he there was a music box but he didn't write it about the puppet in particular or anything uh it was more about like shadow bonnie so i like that it's it's very different so well done inky for for winning this this competition as well Next time, we're actually going to be reading my story uh, and possibly even this. Uh, and so, yeah, make sure you join me for that because it's the beginning of the ozone law. Let's go. <laughs> uh, I will see you then. Uh, yeah, so catch you later. Goodbye.